Well, this is our fifth and concluding message of our series during the month of January, simply entitled Prayer and Fasting. I'm here to tell you now is the time to celebrate. We've been on 21 day Daniel fast. And if you've been following along with us today after service, we are breaking our fast. You can eat whatever you want. I lost seven pounds. Hopefully you got a little, you lost a little something and I'm putting all seven back on today at lunch. That's what it is. I made note of some things. And by the way, if you're new or you're checking us out, the Daniel fast is 21 days of eating only fruits and vegetables. It's from the Old Testament. Uh, Daniel who abstained from eating the things of the world because the meats and the, uh, the, the dietary was, to, was sacrificed to, to, uh, to idols. And so they stepped back, but that's a very healthy way to eat. And our church engaged in 21 days of prayer and fasting, and we're believing God for great results. But I did take note of what I'm planning on eating today. You ready? This is what I'm doing. Meat, bread, coffee. I should have gotten an amen right there. Coffee, pasta, taco, cereal, French toast, eggs, bacon, cheeseburgers with ketchup. You need ketchup. Fries, nachos, dessert, bagel with cream cheese and a little strawberry jelly, iced tea, pizza, and tomorrow, Chick-fil-A. Come on, somebody, come on. I'm just joking. I'm not eating all that for lunch. That's lunch and dinner. Come on, somebody. And you know what? Just to maybe help us all out internally, we are at the concession stand. When you leave on your right, as you walk down the hallway, we are giving away free munchkins here at Marlton Assembly of God. Now listen, you can have these for free, but listen, I'm dying right now. I, I, just one second, real quick. Hold on a second. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I haven't had sugar in 21 days. I just felt something. I felt, a, I felt a peace. I felt a joy. And the world cannot take it away. Oh my goodness. That was the best moment I've had in 21 days. Thank you, Lord. So that's what's going on. Oh, if you're watching online, you say, well, how do I get my free Dunkin' Donuts? Well, listen, you can actually get them. Get in your car, go to Dunkin' Donuts, drive through. It will cost you a few dollars, but it's free, all right? It's free, all right? There it is. It's, so why not be happy? Why not be joyful? It's good to complete something. It's good to say you did something. And so we can laugh a little bit. So I'll give you a couple dad jokes, right? Here we go. A man's zipper broke, but he fixed it on the fly. <laughs> Pretty good, right? <laughs> what do you say to an impatient jockey? Hold your horses. <laughs> hey, seriously though, the other day, a bunch of books in my house, I fell on my head, but I have no one to blame but myself. <laughs> and the last one right here, these are good. Listen, I've been grumpy for 21 days. All right, here we go. Never kiss somebody on January 1st. It's just the first date. All right, there we go right there. Come on, somebody. So there's a lot of questions. You say, why, why, did we, why did we pray and fast? 21 days is a long time. Why did we do that? We did that for the future. Maybe God touched your life in a certain way. I know God's moving in your heart. There's a presence of God. There's an anointing. There's unity in the church. That's great. But we did that for the future. We live with a lot of uncertainties right now about the virus, the political atmosphere around us, financially, inflation is rising. Uh, I don't know all the details, but it looks like there's about to be a war in Ukraine and Russia and who's going to be involved. It, it seems like America is kind of getting ready. The, all these uncertainties, I don't know, but I do know when God's people pray and fast, it does bring results. And we're believing God for this year supernaturally. I don't mean to keep saying this, but if you look at the last two years when we prayed and fasted, what God did, and only God could have done it, but part of it is because we prayed and fasted. So today is a day of celebration but there is a sense that it's not just today, but there's a greater celebration that's gonna happen and it's with the return of Jesus Christ. So today we do, we kind of like let our guard down. There's a time for feasting, the Bible says, and also there's a time for fasting. Now is the time for feasting again. And so we look forward to that time, maybe just a, a slice of pizza, come on with some pepperoni, somebody from Riviera, come on. I mean, there's that sense. But what will we really celebrate down the road. Why are we doing this? Why are we disciplining our body? It's because we know Jesus Christ is going to come back. That's what we know for sure. So I want to first talk to you about the promise of the second coming of Christ for his followers. And the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter one, 
After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven, he will come back and in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Now, if you don't know about Jesus, Jesus came to earth from heaven. The Bible says he was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. But he came to the world for one reason, to die on the cross for our sins. His blood would wash away our sins, cleanse our conscience, wipe away our sin, give us peace in our heart. The Bible also says that Jesus is a healer. And maybe you're here today, you need forgiveness of sins or you just need to be healed. It could be emotional healing, forgiveness, or just something in your body physically you need healing in your life. The Bible also says, like in Acts chapter one, verse eight, that you'll receive power. He, spirit baptizes us. But our hope or our blessed hope, also called the rapture, is when Jesus Christ is gonna come back for his church and we will be with the Lord forever. So there's a sense that we're celebrating Christ and today in his soon return. And the believer, the follower in Christ, they fixed their eyes on Christ's return. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the King. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When he takes me by the hand and leads me to the promised land. Oh, what a day, glorious day that will be. So I've been looking forward to this day. Actually, I had the exact time that I was gonna break the fast. It was gonna be 9.25 when I was gonna eat a donut on the platform. Some of you are like, okay, I gotta wait to get home to eat something. There's a sense of a readiness for that day. Believers look forward to when Jesus Christ is gonna come back. You say, when is that gonna happen? We don't know, but Jesus Christ is gonna come back. The Bible goes on to say in 1 Thessalonians, this is what will happen. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who still are alive will be left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The Bible says it's kind of like a blessed, a blessed hope. I don't know how God's gonna do it, but if in a moment he can create the world, the Bible says that the dead in Christ will rise first. So maybe you've had some Christian people that followed the Lord and they died already. The Bible says they're gonna rise first in a moment and twinkling of an eye. And then we will be caught up with them in the Lord. You say, how's that gonna happen? I don't know. What do you say, what do you say about burn victims or people's lives maybe were annihilated through war? God in a moment is gonna reassemble bodies, parts, lives in a moment. He's gonna catch us up in a twinkling of an eye and the Bible says, we'll be with the Lord forever. That's the promise that Jesus Christ, once he went up to heaven, that he will soon come back. And this is our hope. Jesus Christ is coming back. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. So that's the promise. Jesus is coming back. Let me, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is coming back. One more time. Jesus is coming back. Sometimes I just wish he would pick up that trump and just come home. Come on, somebody. But Jesus is coming back. That is the hope of every believer. And we live in this kind of this, this moment of 2022, this anticipation that he could come back. And which leads us not just to the promise, but the practice. You'll say, well, how do we live this out in the real, real world? Going back to verse 18. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about the return of Christ. I remember when I stepped on the campus of Central Bible College and back then, this is 1990 to 94, I was a basketball player. I didn't know much about it. I just felt like I should go to school there. That was in Springfield, Missouri. And I remember my college coach, I played all four years there, whatever. He was the, one of the first things that, I, I just happened to see him within the first hour I was there. He goes, hey, I need you on my team. Don't, don't think you're just gonna come and sit here I need you to come and start playing. And boy, that encouragement to my soul blessed me. It moved me. If you've ever had a coach or a teacher or a parent or somebody that you loved or cared about gave you encouragement, it lifts you. Most people go with encouragement. You can push anybody down. 
but encourage. You know what the Bible says? Encourage one another. Talk about it. Even on the way out, you're going to get your Dunkin' Donuts, walk down there. You know what? This is just temporary, but Jesus is going to come back because when people's minds go to a higher place, this is temporary. These are hard days, but the Lord is going to come back. Encourage one another. Now, you know this, and by the way, I don't know if you know this, you know this, you know this, but we say we're going to have 100 services in here, 50 on Sunday and 50 on Wednesday during, during this transition. We're in the, the gymnasium of the field house. Don't really like it. We have to put flooring down, set up the platform. Drum, everything has to be set up. We got it down to about 45 minutes per se- session, but that, that's a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're here. We only have 70 more to go. Come on, somebody, 70 more. And there's been an observation that I've had. I said, oh, by the way, let me just, maybe by example, uh, Ethan, can you help me out? Can you just bring a chair up here real quick? Not that one. I'm just joking. That's fine. I love doing that. Thank you so much. Very good. So after church at the 1045 service, and that's why a lot of you have been coming to the nine o'clock service. Like, (laughs) we'll get that done. If you just watch, if you just watch, about three minutes after church, the lights go on, and it's about 30 busy bees that run around and they just start stacking chairs. Pastor Christian, remind me, how many chairs do we, is there a max? Ten high. Ten high. If you go to 11, then the whole thing comes crashing down. But you'll just watch people and they're moving these chairs. They're stacking them. And we've been doing this for what, two, three months now? They're just moving these chairs. And it's not easy. It's heavy. It's a lot of heavy work. I personally have not seen one person complain. Maybe you have, maybe someone said something on their breath, but I've been watching this. Not one person has complained. You know, when someone comes to our church and they see like happy, joyful, encouraging people, it does something to our soul. Who wants to go somewhere? Have you ever had like a a mean or a harsh coach and all they did is curse you out and push you down, said you're nothing, you're not gonna be, you feel like quitting. The only way you're just kind of staying because you feel like you have to or you're, Listen, I don't know all that's going to happen in 2022, but I tell you what, if we'll bring encouragement, if we'll stack chairs, move chairs, give, worship, whatever God's asked us to do, that's where the energy takes place. That's what God does because we're called by God to do this. Encourage one another. Talk about it with your kids. Even when there's temporary things, just say, hey guys, listen, this is just a temporary thing, but one day we're going to be in heaven with Jesus. Let it come rolling off your tongue. Let your perspective be, this is temporary. We're in this building right now, it's temporary. We're going to the larger sanctuary, it's temporary, it's in motion. So don't have a bad attitude and we haven't had it, but let's keep being positive. Let's keep talking about Jesus. Let's keep talking about his soon return when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. So I serve as a police chaplain and our police chief who has now served in this township for 25 years he had his last or his final like roll call. And I don't know if you've ever seen it, but a police chief, his name is Christopher Chu. He, he's done, he's retired. He's in his mid fifties, he's done. But they kind of do a radio call and they kind of sign off. It's the last time. So they invited people from the township and he got up and he just said one more time. He, and he was talking to all the, the police and all the, 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 the signed in or sworn in policemen. He goes, never forget, this is a calling. This is a calling to this township to protect and serve. If you get up and you get into a squad car and you're having a bad attitude or a day, never forget this is a calling. Ladies and gentlemen in this room, we're called by God to do God's work. We're called by God to focus on him and to practice and to think about his soon return. And so I encourage you, I encourage you to stay faithful to the things of God and thankful for the the church, and listen, I'm not here to beat up anybody online, but before the snow, I had it that we should be faithful to coming to church. Now listen, I wanna say this loud and clear. Many of you wish you could be here. We wish you could be here. We miss you, we have empathy for you. But if you could be here and you choose not to be here, you should be here. Does that make sense? Listen, the Bible says this. Let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but watch this, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. The Bible says, talk about Jesus returning, talk about it, but don't just talk about it, keep coming to church. You say, why? Because when you come to church, you're with God's people and what are God's people doing? They're looking forward to Jesus' return. If you're not looking forward to Jesus' return, you can easily get down in the mouth. 
You can easily become unfaithful to the things of God. And by the way, if you say, well, I love God, I just don't go to church, or I just don't love, listen, if you love God, you'll love the things of God. I can't just tell my wife, oh, I love you, and then I go in a different direction. She goes, no, you gotta help with the dishes. You gotta like, be nice to me. You gotta love me. You can't just say it. It's easy to say it, but we do it, we participate, why? Because we're encouraging one another as we see the day approaching. So we're talking about it, we're living it out, we're waiting for Jesus' to return, we're, we're looking at it from a perspective. It goes on to say, the Bible says this, now listen, you who say today or tomorrow we will do this or go to that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why, you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will, we will live and do this or do that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do it and does not do it, it is sin. So the Bible goes on to say, like in your vocabulary, you should say words like this, if it's the Lord's will. Like tomorrow, I'm going to get up tomorrow and I'm going to go to work. You know, if it's the Lord's will, I'm going to plan out if it's the Lord's will. Or there used to be an old school, like kind of a wording that says, if the Lord tarries. Has has anyone familiar with that? The Lord tarries. So I'm going to do this. My my kid has a game on Thursday. I hope they don't cancel it. Or I'm going to go to Los Angeles. I have a business trip. If the Lord tarries. If the Lord tarries does not come back. Because if we're waiting for the Lord to come back, there's a sense that we're always living with this anticipation that Jesus is gonna come back. If he's not coming back, then you can just do whatever you want. You can sin, you can act however you want. But if Jesus is gonna come back and we're gonna stand before him and give an account of our lives, we're kind of always prepared. So I have things to do. Tomorrow, I have, I'm going up to Newark tomorrow. There's a problem with the heating, we gotta get out. I have a plan if it's the Lord's will. But if it snows a whole bunch more tomorrow, then I can't go. And then I guess that'll get pushed back to the next day. I'm going up to Newark tomorrow, but that's if Jesus comes back. Or excuse me, doesn't come back. So I have plans. I have things I got to do. But it's always living under this idea that Jesus is going to come back. So the question is when? When is Jesus going to come? When can I mark that on my calendar? Is that in March? Because you know what we could all do? Just run up our credit card bills because just give it to somebody else. The Bible says, stay awake for you do not know on what day, you're, what day the Lord is coming back. I remember singing a song as a, like a kid. People get ready, Jesus is coming, soon we'll be going home. People get ready, Jesus is coming, take you back your own. Is it possible that if Jesus comes back maybe in a week from now, you're not ready, you don't go? Shouldn't we be talking about this all the time? Listen, we're living our lives in perspective of practicing. Hey, if it's God's will, if the Lord tarries, hey, we got to come to church. Why? Oh, I don't know if I got something out of it. It's not about you getting some out of it. I'm not sure if I'm getting fed. You need to feed yourself to a degree, but you also need to encourage one another. You are important to God in this place. If you walk around with a negative spirit, you're hurting Jesus and his mission. But you say, you know what? I'm coming in here today and somebody needs encouragement. It's the body. We help one another. We lift one another up. We don't make fun of one another. Everyone's on a different spiritual path. We're all focused on Jesus and we're getting stronger. We're believing God and we're called by God to do what God has called us to do. And we don't know when we're just ready. So maybe you have to ask yourself right now, if Jesus would come back this afternoon, after we ate, let's be clear, after we ate, Lord, can you just wait? I don't know why. I used to say it all the time. Like, Jesus, can I just get married first? I don't know why. I just wanted to get married first. But just say Jesus is coming back today at 3 o'clock. And you're not ready. You know what would happen to you? All people that follow Christ would go to heaven. And it would be like this vanishing. Like, what happened? The Bible even goes to say in the book of Matthew, it, it could be like a husband and wife. Or you're living together or whatever. One person serving Jesus. And one person's not, all of a sudden, boom, in a moment, they're gone. And you're sitting on the couch like, what just happened? This is not like the TV show Lost. Well, hey, where are we, time travel? No, this is, this is like real. Are you ready? If Jesus Christ would come back, are you ready? You should ask yourself that. 
I never want to kind of like live my life with the idea that if Jesus comes back, I'm not prepared, I'm not ready. Everything puts in perspective. So the question is, people get ready. Jesus is coming. Take your back your own. I am preparing you right now to stand before Jesus Christ. I am getting you ready. You are not going to look over at me, Pastor John, and say, Pat, you didn't teach me, Pastor. No one in this room or online is going to plead ignorance because of me. Not because of me. If you want to do what you want to do, you want to come and go, do what you want to do, not serve Jesus. Listen, I'm pleading with you. Get yourself ready. Jesus is coming back. You want to be part of the rapture. I warn you. I warn you. I sternly warn you. Jesus is coming back. I warn you this is happening. And and the signs of the time seems like it's going to happen any moment. But you must be ready for his soon return. And then that finally leads me simply to the presence of the Holy Spirit until he comes back. You know, Jesus said, it's good that I go because then he would send his spirit. Watch this. But very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going. This is Jesus. Unless I go, the advocate, the Holy Spirit will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. The Holy Spirit, the advocate, the parakletos, the helper, the comforter, he would come and he would be with us. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not alone. It's the abiding presence that lives inside of us that keeps us and sustains us, that gives us a peace until Christ comes back. We have a work to do. Listen, I I would love to have seen Jesus on earth. But if you just hold on to the promise, the Bible says it's good that he went away so his spirit could go anywhere at any time. When Jesus was on earth, he was bound by time and space, wherever Jesus was. But then when he went to heaven, he said, listen, my Holy Spirit's gonna be wherever people are. And if you make yourself available to Holy Spirit, he will be with us. And the Bible says in in the Great Commission, even to the end of the age, so we're not alone. And so we stay strong in prayer and the word. That's why come Wednesday night, you will be encouraged. Some of you, I don't come on Wednesday. You need to come. You need to come. You need to be close. You need to be encouraged. We need to be stronger. We need the Holy Spirit, Acts 1-8. But you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Why? Because this is all happening amongst us, and it's his presence that guides us. You say, well, what does Jesus look like? The Bible says this. We know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, and we shall see him as he is. There will be a day where you'll get to see Jesus face to face. But right now, we're exercising faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Right now, the Bible says God rewards us for our faith. Listen, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna reward myself. But the Lord will reward this congregation for our obedience. Just, Just watch. I don't know when, but just watch. We'll report it the best we can. Watch God's blessing in 2022. That's what God does when people obey Not to simplify this, but to simplify it. When people obey, God blesses. When people live in covenant, they obey what God tells them to do, God blesses them. You want God's blessing on your life? Obey him. Live with this idea that Jesus is coming back and be prepared, get ready. And if you're hungry today, let me just tell you, in heaven, it's gonna be so great. The Bible says it's called the marriage supper of the lamb. You can eat whatever you want and gain no calories. It's like the best thing ever. Come on, somebody. But you're gonna see, you're gonna see all your lost loved ones in Christ. There's gonna be a great unifying together, great worship. God's gonna give out rewards. He's gonna have, have responsibilities. Some of you, Satan has tricked people into thinking that heaven's boring. Let me just tell you how busy Satan is. I was driving down the radio, I listened on the radio, driving down the street, and you, the number one streamed, like, uh, I don't know, like the Netflix or streaming, you know what the number one stream show right now? It's called Lucifer. Americans watch the show Lucifer more than any other TV show. You don't, you say, oh, that's just a show, or I listen to music just for the beat. No, 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 no. It comes rushing into your heart and mind and stays in there, and you believe everything about the world. It's the number one thing. Jesus said, he says he comes to give you life and life to the full. Satan comes to destroy your life, destroy your mind, take you, just, just get you not thinking about anything about eternal life. And I'm here to kind of refute that. Listen, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah, there's going to be a great time together up in heaven, but Jesus is the hope. And he can give you grace. He can walk you through it. We'll be with the Lord forever. But if we're listening to the lie of Satan, we're just fooling ourselves. And he's winning. 
He's winning. So when you're watching Lucifer, you say, oh, that's great. You know, it's a lie from Satan. And so many people, I just look at so many people, just listen to the lies of this world. So in conclusion, you say, well, how do you prepare for heaven while you're on earth? You say, pastor, listen, I got to go home. My mom lives next door and I got to shovel her out. That's my reality. And that may be your reality. I have responsibilities. As soon as I get out of here tonight, I have responsibilities tomorrow. I get it. You have to plan as if Jesus is not coming back, but you have to prepare as if he is. You have to have retirement because what happens if Jesus doesn't come back for a hundred years? You have to kind of live this, you have to walk this out. But we plan and we prepare as if Christ is coming back. So we keep our feet on the ground, but one day they'll be off the ground and we move forward. So how do you take a heaven message and prepare your heart? Number one, and by the way, this is you online or here. Number one, receive Jesus Christ as your savior. If you're not sure you're going to heaven, wouldn't you think that's like the biggest thing? Like I've seen people like go nuts if their insurance lapses for one day. Oh, you'll make sure that your car insurance your health insurance, you'll make sure you're fully prepared for all of that stuff that you may or may not use, which I have it too. But when it comes to going to heaven, you're not sure? Shouldn't you run up to, run up to me? Shouldn't you run up to me, I mean, as fast as you can? Shouldn't you tackle me and say, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven? I mean, shouldn't you just take Pastor Christian, Pastor Liz Adam, I'm not sure, how do I know? I wanna know. If, if that was me, that would be my top priority. Before I got home on icy roads, I would wear a helmet, I would bubble wrap my car, I would put every, I would, because you know why? It's eternity. There is no in between. It's heaven and hell. And hell was not designed for people. But God can't let sinners in, he can't, because heaven is holy. And Jesus makes you holy. So when Christ comes in, then you can go to heaven. It's the only way. It's not my role, I'm just a messenger. But if you're not sure, ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and know that God loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus gives life and he gives eternal life. So while you're down here, if you're not, we call it being saved, or there's another word, syn syn synonymous, is uh, born again. Say, so yeah. Like you should, you should, as you're sitting there as a human being, you should say, yeah, I'm saved. I know if I would die today, if I died today, I would go to heaven. You should answer that. Now listen, the Bible's very clear. He rather you hot or cold. You say, pastor, I hear you. My mom made me come to church today. I don't want to be here. That, that's fine. God's not playing a game. He's trying to save your soul. He's trying to get you out of hell and get you to go to heaven. The Bible says we're sinners and we need a savior. So ask Christ. And there has to be a change, like a repentance. You turn your mind, you, you change. You let God make you holy from the inside out because he loves you. First, receive Christ as your savior. Number two, leave fear behind. Hebrews 2, 9 says, explains how Jesus suffered death so, we might, so, we might taste, so that he might taste death for everyone. Because he died for our sins, we don't have to fear death. Now, there may be some people in this room, you fear dying. Public speaking is number one, the greatest fear human beings have. And number two is death. That's interesting. Maybe you're fearful of dying and you just need the Lord to give you grace. Because if it's true that when you die, you get to go with the Lord, there's actually more of a celebration. That's why if you go to a Christian's funeral, usually it's a time of celebration. And you might just take it kind of like, carelessly yeah I'm going to heaven because you just work deals you even like books like the art of the deal you just you just maneuver you're a dealer you're a hustler and you just think maybe when you get into heaven you can kind of hustle your way I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out then no that, that, that's it it's like Noah's Ark like that's it no one heard about rain coming then all of a sudden get on the boat only eight people it's the exact same way that's it so when we're, ta we're talking about souls and we just leave fear behind and say Lord Listen, I'm just transferring from this world to the next year. We should walk around with a confidence that we belong to Jesus. Amen. Number three, recruit as many people as possible to go to heaven with you. Listen, I need your help. There's people, it's called, it's like a fancy word, it's called being de-churched. Maybe people that used to come to church. And listen, I'm not being anybody up online, I'm not. But maybe people went to church. Now listen, if someone leaves our church, and goes to another church, God bless them. Our church 
and there's a lot of good other churches. It's not like we're the only church. I do think we are the best church. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. Of course you would think that, right? Because you come to church. You should love your church, love your pastor, love your people. But I need your help. Everybody here, if you see people that are de church, they're not going to church, I need your help. I need you to invite them. The easiest thing you could do is go to church. I mean, honestly, all you have to do is get up and go to church. But you'll have to get used to bring people with you to church and then also share the gospel. This message like this, if you just discipline yourself, you could share this type of message with somebody that you love. Like maybe a neighbor, or aunt, uncle, you care about their soul for eternal life. You could just kind of go to them and say, can I just talk to you about your soul? It's an awkward conversation in the beginning, but if you really care about their soul, ladies and gentlemen, Marlton Assembly of God cares about souls. It's not the sanctuary expansion. You know what's gonna be in that sanctuary expansion? Chairs. You know who's gonna sit in chairs? People. We're gonna have 50, 60 new spots for MCA. Statistics tell you, the younger that you reach people for the Lord, the easier it is. It's hard to take a 45 year old man who's been living in sin, does not go to church, does not love God, does not serve God. It's hard, their hearts are hard. But you get a tender kid age four, five and six, you got a lot better shot. It's just how it is. Have you ever tried to learn a new language when you're older? It's a lot easier to learn a language when you're younger. Your hearts are more tender. That's why we have to have kids in youth ministry and that includes yours. I see mom and dad, you want your kids to do well. But there is a sense that we live with this, that Jesus is coming back. And we don't put that in their face, but it's perspective. It's just perspective. It's like, like I like the clothes I'm wearing, but like, one day I'm not gonna need these clothes. That, that's just, just like earthly clothes, but the Lord will clothe me forever in heaven and with a new body and a new mind in heaven and make all things right. So I'm just trying to reach souls. But I want you to jump on board with me. Come to church faithfully, but invite people, especially people that have been de-churched. Don't make them feel bad if they left. It's hard. It, it's sometimes hard when people just leave, they don't tell you, they don't tell me. I'm like, okay, Lord, it's under blood, whatever. But I am concerned about their soul. And I know there's a lot of people that are just kind of in the wind right now. You know what concerns me? Did they walk away from the Lord? Then I had to have some like conversations with people, like once saved, always saved. Can you walk away from the Lord? I don't know, but there's too much on the line and we just need to serve Jesus. Invite people back to church, but let's go after them. Why are we doing ground zero? because we need to raise up young people that have a passion for Jesus. And we have to go into the highways and byways. We have to go in everywhere we can to be a light. And we need to do this. Why MCA? Why MCA? That's just a lot of work. Most churches would never do an MCA. The reliability, the risk, it's because if we can reach families, then it gives us a great future for the kingdom of God. And I just believe in a great future in Jesus' name. Finally, store up treasures in heaven rather than on earth. But store up, the Bible says, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and vermin do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. My friends, this world is temporary, it's passing by. I'm not feeling it a certain way. Listen, I'm 49, I'm about to be 50 in two months. We're having a big party. We're having a big party. Everybody's giving me a lot of money. We're, I'm just joking, I'm just joking. I'm just, I got caught up in the flesh. But I only have a certain amount of time. You know what your life is? Some of you young guys, the Bible says, your life is like a mist. Here today, gone tomorrow. It's a lie from Satan himself to think that you got time. You don't have time. You have a little bit of time and then it's gone. The only things that are gonna last for eternity is the Bible and people. The word of God and people, that's it. So this chair is not going to heaven. It might not even make it another 70 services. I'm just telling you, it may not. You're like, where did that chair go from? Oh man, it got beat up. You know, sometimes you men, you get new tires on your car. They're designed to be used. Sometimes you get carpet like for the church and everyone comes and mess it all up. My dad would say, that's why you have carpet, to use it. That's why you have tires, to use it. You have a car, to use, but it's temporary. Our lives are temporary. Our bodies will break down. Our minds will move forward. Life goes fast. Ask an old person, did it go fast? Yeah, the days are slow, but the years will go fast. So our time is short. So what are we doing? We're storing up treasures in heaven. I commend you. $64,000 for water wells in Zimbabwe, praise God. Missions, praise God. 
Tithing, praise God. Serving, praise God. Cleaning a building, praise God. Work in Newark, praise God. Missionary support, praise God. I believe the best is yet to come. And God's gonna bless us. We have no idea what God can do. But if you're sitting here, you say, I don't have a life. I, I don't have anything that matters to God or the future. God can give you a life. And he'll, st- he'll give you a burden to store up treasures. Not on this. Some people, they just wanna be fancy down here. Hey, look at me. That's what happened to me. I used to work for Lexus dealership. And back then in the day, they used to pay me like 10 bucks an hour. And it was the coolest thing. So people would trade in their Lexus. Lexus was high money back then. So the rich people, they would just walk away from their car. They would have like coins in there. And I would go to my boss. I'm like, dude, the guy left all. He goes, John, I don't want to see it. You could take whatever you want. Oh man, I would take coins. I'm like, Lord, and I'm running around. It was all packed out. I had Zimbabwe's in my pocket, right there. I call them Zimbabwe's in my pocket. And then they, we had to clean up the cars, they were people or whatever. And then I would just take the, remember, I don't know if when Lexus first came out, that was like SC 300s and 400s. I would would drive the cars around my friend's neighborhoods. I would honk, and then, and then I would just keep going because I wanted them to like me. I wanted to feel good about myself. I've had to leave that alone with Jesus. Jesus said, he'll never leave me nor forsake me. He'll meet all of my needs. He loves me. And I have something to do down here because I'm getting ready for up there. Everybody in this room, some people get so caught up in like liking or getting jealous with our people or everybody's concerned with everything else. And what we need is to let God just love us. He made us just the way he made us. And he has a plan and a purpose for your life. And if you'll use those gifts and store up treasures in heaven, you'll have a joyful life. Because if you get your mind so caught up on the things of this world, you get angry about everything. I mean, you get overly concerned about gas prices. Listen, I don't like gas prices. I have an F-150, $100, and it didn't fill it up. I'm like looking at the guy, there's some mistake with you. I'm reporting you to the gas association. You're making it, whatever. I don't know. But I have to remember, this is just temporary. Heaven's my home and I'm going there and what a day of rejoicing that will be. So can you live in two worlds? Yes. I have one foot in heaven and one foot down here. That one's actually getting a lot closer for me. But you say, what are you gonna do today? I'm gonna eat and remember and talk and celebrate about the goodness of Almighty God. And I'm gonna share that message with so many people wherever I can because we have a little bit amount of time and if we play our cards right, God's gonna bless us. Ladies and gentlemen, God's gonna bless this house. I'm convinced that he's going to bless. He already has. He's going to do it in 2022. Would you stand with me in the Lord's presence? I preached way too long, but it was good. You may be tired. You might have gone through a lot in 21 days. Now is the time to eat. Now is the time to drink coffee. Now is the time to go get something. But why did we do it? We did it for God's presence in our life. We did it for God's power in our life. We did it for miracles in our life. But the greatest miracle is you asking Jesus in your heart. Young people, are you ready? Moms and dads, are you ready? Have you asked Christ to come into your life? Are you storing up treasures in heaven with joy in your heart? Oh, let that be our praise. Let that be our worship. Think about the goodness of the Lord. Work, work as unto the Lord. You say, I have a terrible boss. Work as unto the Lord. Go to school as unto the Lord. Play basketball is unto the Lord. Listen, we're going to win the battles if we're staying strong in Christ. He's faithful. There's a lot of pressure on me, my wife, this church, the ministries. A lot of tension, not because there's lack of unity. We're just feeling the spiritual battle. The souls of men are at this altar. The souls of men for all of eternity are around us. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's, It's going after souls. But why not start with the souls online or right in this room? Are you ready if Jesus Christ would come back? It's not a threat. I say, yeah, pastor. I asked Jesus in my heart two years ago. He washed away my sins and he changed me forever. He cleansed me, he made me whole, and I'm living a holy life. And man, what God is doing is he's moving me forward. Or, or maybe you just need to get yourself ready. You just need to get yourself ready. The Bible says whoever has this hope purifies himself. Oh yeah, you're ready, but you're not living pure? Purify yourself. Confess all sin, repent, and say, Lord, I want to live my life for you. 
And then the book of Revelation, the last, book is, last verses of the Bible says, even Lord, so come. Oh, come, Lord. Oh, I can't wait for Jesus to come back. Lord, purify my heart, purify my mind. Prepare me, prepare me. This is our celebration. Jesus is coming back. So let's pray. The first thing a human being should always do on planet Earth to get themselves ready for eternal life is to ask Jesus Christ to come into their heart. Whether it's just praying or lifting your hands or going into a chat, you say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm broken, I'm hurting, and I need you to save me. Wash away my sins, heal my life, and I wanna find the purpose and destiny that you've called me to do. I wanna live my life for you as a follower of Christ. When you say that, your world changes, and he begins to touch you and heal you and forgive you from the inside out. That's what he did for me, that's what he did for everyone on our staff, and that's what he wants to do for you. No one's looking around, but you say, Pastor, that's me. I need to ask Jesus into my life as my savior. Not my dad, not my mom, not the pastor, not a deacon, but for me. He becomes your savior. You follow him, that means he's your Lord. You follow him, you obey him, he's worthy of it. And you give your life to Christ. And you just thank him for it, you just worship him for it, you just live in that. And the promise after salvation is that he'll bring you with you to eternal life in heaven. Oh, what a great thing, it's called salvation. No one's looking around, but you wanna give your life to Christ. Confess your sins and repent and say, Lord, yes, I'm gonna receive your salvation and I wanna live for you. If that's you, whether it's online or in the room, I wanna pray for you as we start this new year after prayer and fasting, you shoot up your hand and say, that's me, pastor. I wanna give my life to Christ. Is there anyone in the house today? You say, that's me. I wanna give my life to Jesus Christ today. Is there anyone in the house? Say, that's me. I don't know if there's anybody online, but there's a second group of people. I need your help. I need you to reach as many people for Christ. Invite them, talk to them about God. If they're de church invite them back or make sure they're in another church. If somebody doesn't go to church, invite them to church, invite them to Christ. Invite them to the field house, invite them to MCA, invite them to a special event. Don't let the people around you go to hell. Think about eternity and the cost and the calling that we have. Today is a day of celebration, but when we get to heaven, that's where the real celebration is gonna be. The marriage supper of the lamb, reunited with lost loved ones, reunited with Christ, and we will rejoice with him for all of eternity. Oh, what a day of rejoicing that will be. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna close with a word of prayer. I know you have things to do today, responsibilities. We invite you to be with us on Wednesday night. We're gonna, close, we're gonna sing a song of worship on the way out, but if you wanna come around this altar and pray, just for about two or three minutes, you wanna pray for people that are far from God. It could be your family, kids, moms, dads, or they're just lost loved ones, your neighbor. You say, Pastor, I really wanna get them to church. I really wanna get them to church. You can't do it on your own. Only God does it. In these desperate days, maybe God is up to something wonderful. And you say, Pastor, I wanna pray for the souls of people. I'll join around this altar with you. I wanna invite you, if you wanna pray for people in your life that need Jesus, because our time is short, I wanna invite you to come. Stand around this altar, lift up your hands in desperation, and say, oh God, touch my son, my daughter, my family for your glory. And God wants to do it. He wants to bring salvation and hope in Jesus' name. Oh, come on, let's pray, let's sing. came to earth to die for sinners, like me, like you. And then he commissions us, he calls us to reach other people for him. 
yeah, we go to church, we talk about it, but there's a sense that we get more people to come and hear about the goodness of God or we share the message with power. And we're gonna play that song one more time, but no singing, but especially if you're around this altar or online, maybe you're by yourself, you're tired, you're lonely, but you say, there's a higher reason I'm on this earth. Maybe you're in the chairs that you just whisper to God or you just yell it out. God, touch my son, touch my daughter. As we, as the music plays loud, let God hear your voice. Call on the name of the Lord for people in your family, your sons and daughters, with all of your heart. Just say it to God. The battle belongs to God. Just trust God that he's gonna do something wonderful in 2022. We'll lift the volume and begin to pray. Call on the Lord. Oh God, I pray for my neighbors. I pray for my friends. I pray for my children. Lord, I pray for every kid in our MCA. I pray for moms and dads. Lord, I pray for everyone who comes in this field house. Oh God, for your glory. For your glory, oh God, we need your grace. Oh God, hear our prayer for the salvation of souls. The salvation of souls. Oh God, our time is limited. Our time is limited. May we reach people for Christ. Oh Jesus, be lifted up, be glorified. Oh God, we call on your name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I just want to tell you how proud am I am of you. I know I saw some people walking around with coffee. I said, you had to wait. Some people said, I couldn't wait. So you did 20 and a half days. It doesn't matter. I'm just joking. But I'm proud of you. 21, 21, 21 days is not really easy on the Daniel fast. I'm proud of you for doing it. Now we move on. As soon as I say amen, I'm eating another one right there. I'm eating another one. But I'm proud of you. But I really believe our best days are ahead as a church. I would be a little scared as a pastor not to start the year off in prayer. We cannot move forward in our flesh, but if God's spirit leads us, we can walk behind the vision, we can walk behind his presence and he'll guide us and lead us. He'll teach us his ways, amen? So I pray God's blessing on your life. You can get free munchkins on your way, put, put a couple pounds on between here and the car, but be with us on Wednesday night. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Hey, yo, we hope you had a great day in church. We can't wait to see you guys this upcoming Wednesday for United Prayer Service or next week online in person. See you later.